This way we've been discussing it, though, is to kind of take the world and split it into pieces. Here's technology, it did X. Mm -hmm. Here's human capital, it did Y. Here's physical capital, it did Z, and together they somehow explain this total. Mm -hmm. But I know from talking to you that you've said, well, that's kind of an odd way to look at it is in some ways, isn't it? It is, very much. I mean, there's, I, to me, there, there, there are two issues. First, and this applies especially to physical capital, if you ask why has there been investment in more physical capital, I think it, part of it is because improvements in technology make that, those investments in physical capital worthwhile. So in this accounting exercise, a lot of what we attribute directly to physical capital, there's a good argument it's indirectly attributable to improvements in technology because without the technical change, you wouldn't have gotten that growth in capital. Also the other way too though, right? Maybe without the growth in capital, or at least a shift in the tech, not capital. It wasn't like the existing capital became so much more productive. To take advantage of the new technology, don't we need new capital? That, that, yes, that's a fair point. That's a good point. Because a lot of, a lot of technologies are you know, just sort of embodied in the capital goods. So you, know, you can't, you think about, I don't know, uh, improvements in computing, you know, like it's the computer. So we need investments in different equipment to take advantage of some of the technical changes. Now, when you get to human capital, there I think they're much more co-equal because you can't imagine implementing new technologies without the better workforce. And to me, there I see a complementarity. You know, if you think about investments in human capital, they wouldn't be so worthwhile if technology wasn't improving, but the investments in technology wouldn't be worthwhile unless you know the the, the labor force was getting more skilled. So there, I think it's. You know, they're, they're on a more equal footing. I guess one way to think about then, as you see the growth process over the long haul, is we're, we're, we're building new technologies. We're developing new technologies. In some cases, they're adding whole new aspects to our lives that didn't exist before. You know, mm -hmm. methods of communications changed dramatically. We were able to do things that really we didn't they do were before. Beyond the realm of science fiction. Either. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So one, one is they add new things we can do. Mm -hmm. Another is they change how we do things, that the way we produce an ear of corn today is really different than the way we produced an ear of corn in the past. And those new technologies in either case require new capital usually. That is, it's not the same old capital that's going to take advantage of that new technology. I couldn't use my old radio to watch TV. I needed a but TV to watch need, TV. If you want to watch high definition TV, you need the new TV set. And it needed new workers to go along with that. Mm -hmm. So we can see the process of economic growth not just in terms of the aggregate amount we, of stuff we have per person has gone up, but we can see the transformation in, in how it's done. Is that yeah, it's the fair? Change, yeah, it's just a change in how things are produced and, and, and what's being produced. Although, I mean, if you think about the, you know, what's being produced there, it's, you know, a lot of the, the new products, you can often find an old product that they're kind of substituting for. People, you know, in the 20s were listening to, you know, radio, and now they're watching their high-definition TVs. So they're very different, you know, it's a different experience, they're different objects, but they, in some sense, fill, you know, some of the same wants from, you know, if you think about individuals and what people enjoy, what they, you know, what they want to have. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting because I mean, now you're talking, I mean, I'm a colleague of ours for a long time and a great close friend of mine, Gary Becker, kind of had this view of preferences that were very consistent with that, that sort mm -hmm. of said, there aren't that many basic things we want to do. We want to be entertained. We want to 
mm -hmm. be nourished. We want to do do different things, and mm -hmm. maybe what changes over time is how we accomplish those pretty simple aims. Yeah, I'm 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 on board for that way of thinking about products that they have. You know, they, they're you know, basic wants and different products satisfies you know those needs and you know, and different mixes of stuff. You know, if you think about a dinner, it provides you know, basic nourishment, but a dinner at a very nice restaurant is, you know, has a lot of other um, enjoyable factors as well. So in your view of the world, kind of, you're kind of a preference minimalist in some sense. Not, your preferences don't, aren't really the big driving story. It's not, people haven't no. changed so much from where they were a hundred years ago to where they are today. No, I think probably very little. And I think as economists, you know, one of my teachers one time said, you know, like attributing things to changing preferences is, you know, the last refuge of a scoundrel in terms <laughs> of economists. Like that, it just means we don't know. So, so I think we want to, we want to, we don't want to really go there if we, if we can avoid it. But this is also a big difference, I think between, you know, we talked earlier about, you're about long run and about long run improvements in standard of living. And we talked earlier about why that's so important. That that just, when you look at that long run picture, it just dominates the business cycle as a source of concern about the future. What's our growth rate gonna be? Probably much more important than, is it going to be higher this quarter or next right. quarter? Yeah, no, it's just that, I mean, I agree with you. Like sometimes the, the newspapers, they focus on these very short run growth rates and, you know, I'm thinking in the back of my mind, you know, if, if we look at developed economies, you know, there's an easy way to like, goose up your growth rate for, if you want a high growth rate for one year, engineer a big recession. Yes. And if it's short-lived, you'll have a big growth rate coming out of that recession. So it's these short-run growth rates, to me, not that important. Um, I don't want to say recessions are yeah. trivial, but I think if we, if we think about what, what's made us better off as, you know, you know, a nation over the long haul, it's, it's the, the long run uh, part of growth.